Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's pattern is by Steve Good. I was experimenting uh, live in this first minute or so of the video, trying to get the lighting right, filters and OBS to give a crisper, more clear picture of me cutting. Um, I realized my first error per se is having it on the wrong side of the machine because the air nozzle was in the way. But, you know, I have to try different things until I finally get a setup that works for me. Now, it was a little bit blurry for starting out. I put the filters back to what they normally should be, the defaults, and it was much nicer. Um, so I was able to figure that out during the live stream. And of course, you know, I wasn't happy with the camera. I wasn't happy with a lot of things. And so I, I did not complete this particular project on, on the live. I just stopped at a certain point and knew I would get back to it. Because this is the same type of plywood that I used for the other lives or the other videos recently, um, I wanted to use the um, crown tooth blades. And even though this is a walnut version of plywood versus the other one that it was just straight up vaulted birch, I thought the blade would perform the same. So I started with the crown tooth and because, I don't know why actually, the only thing I can think of is, you can see me struggling here, I, I was getting pretty frustrated with the blade and I finally went back to the puller because I suspect that maybe the glue in the plywood or something was really hindering the performance of the crown tooth blade. Now that I'm back to just doing video recording of this pattern, I, um, I did put the camera on the other side and I'm finding that I don't know, I'm getting better lighting where I move the, the scroll saw to. Now my saw is on a roller table, a roller cart, so I can move it anywhere in the shop I want. And I was pretty happy with the lighting here. I think the only thing I'm not so happy about is that my hand's in the way when I, when I move the blade. But again, it, it doesn't look bad. You can see very clearly what I'm cutting. Um, the polar blade was doing a phenomenal job. You know, it was just a matter of me finding my groove. Um, I did notice something on this pattern and I didn't see it until I was actually cutting. And it's coming up here pretty soon. The way the pattern was designed, I noticed some type of oddity. And I don't know if Steve Good didn't realize it when he was actually creating the pattern or that's what he wanted. But in the flower itself, where the petals are together, there's one spot in the petals that looks like it was designed to put the stem in this location right here. And realistically, I'm thinking, well, maybe the flower wasn't turned properly when he made the pattern. So I modified this to look like the rest of the flower. Now this first one I modified, it wasn't quite as nice as I would have liked it to be, but when I get to the second one, I was definitely able to make that look just like the rest of the flower without any you know you wouldn't have noticed of course i notice i always notice everything but i'll point that out to you uh, when i get to that part i saved the bird for last of course and this truly is a very tedious um cut very small all pretty much the same uh you know once i found my groove um, I cut these sections out here. I did half and then the other half. I found that that's easier for me to do it that way versus doing one cut all the way around. What I'm doing here is much faster. I go too slow around turns. I get too frustrated with them. And I was really absolutely thrilled with how quickly I got through all these cuts on the bird. I don't have any exact time of how long it took me to do this entire cut uh, due to the fact that I did part of it on the live stream. I was doing a lot of testing. Uh, I just didn't have an accurate 
assessment of time frame. But the bird itself took me about 35 minutes to do just these cutouts alone. So I'm estimating maybe an hour and a half to do the rest of the pattern itself. So when I got done with this part, um, I was a little nervous about the outside parameter. Mm. Once again, it's just a lot of curves, a lot of turns. And even though I was, you know, going with the flow on the feathers here, uh, you know, I'm always thinking ahead, which is probably a bad thing. But, you know, I was thinking ahead, uh, trying to come up with a plan of action to do the outside parameter because it, it's very um, intricate versus some of the other patterns I've done that were just an oval with a little bit of stuff or, you know, they're, most of the patterns I've been doing are very simple on the outside cut. And because this was pretty much uh, going with the flow with little, you know, effort on my part, I was trying to um, get an assessment of where I was going to start, how I was going to do it. Um, ideally, a lot of these patterns should be cut out in one fell swoop. You take one cut all the way around the entire pattern and you're done. I don't like doing that because I have to hold it down all the way around and these cuts were too um, precise for me to do that. I'm coming up on that second part of the flower that I had to alter. This one worked out really well for me because I saw it ahead of time unlike the first flower I did and I was extremely happy with how that that cut out. I am going to do another one of these. This one's going to be a standalone um, piece and the other one's a wall plaque. So as you can see now, I'm starting to just cut out sections, removing them, going to the next one and so on, just to keep everything from flip-flopping around while I'm trying to cut. But I also had to hold down the pieces that were already cut because they're, they are fragile to an extent and I did not want to have anything break off while I was cutting. I'm actually looking forward to doing this pattern again. There's some things I'll do a little differently as far as how I cut, but that's like with any new pattern, it's new. So, you know, you have to get some experience. Um, you know, this corner that I just did, I do it that way so I have a nice clean corner. I'm not that good at corners. And so I, I just do what I have to do. I mean, I know there's, there's ways of doing things that are you know, the norm, I guess, but I'm not that person. I just do what works for me so I don't get aggravated with a, with a cut. If, it, if what I do works, I, you know, it ain't broke, I'm not gonna fix it. So here I am at the end of this, I'm finishing up the bottom piece. I didn't make the base yet. I will do that and show you the final product later in another video. But this is how it turned out. That still has the pattern glued on. And this is with the pattern taken off. If you made it this far into the video, thank you very much. Hit that like button. I hope you have a blessed week. Take care.